This is All Out Politics, news, debate and opinion uh, from the heart of Westminster. Uh, when Margaret Thatcher wanted to get her message out, she famously telephoned the Today programme directly at BBC Radio for herself and demanded to be interviewed. Nowadays, uh, she might have filmed a selfie clip instead and put it on Facebook. Well, the government is currently boycotting the Today programme because Boris Johnson's chief adviser, Dominic Cummings, believe it is irrelevant and there are reports that Newsnight uh, could be the next in line. So in the age of social media, do politicians really need the mainstream media anymore? Should they uh, bother with it? And if not, how dangerous could it be for democracy? Joining me to discuss that are John Whittingdale, who is the uh, Conservative MP and former Culture Secretary and the journalist and documentary maker, Tessa mays Clark. Welcome to you both. Now, John Whittingdale, just before we get on to that, a little bit of breaking news. The first urgent question of the year, what's it about? Um, I'm told there is an urgent question on the agreement between uh, Bet365 and some of the Premier League clubs, uh, which will allow them to only show Basically, matches only to people if you, if you, if you, if you place to bet. Um, and this, as you say, is the first urgent question. I mean, under John Burke, we'd have had about ten by now. What, what do you think about that, that, that the, well, the question? I, I, what would you I, say? I understand the concern, and there is a lot of concern about gambling addiction, and obviously this is a way that the company sees of promoting people to gamble. Uh, but it is ultimately a matter between the Premier League and the betting companies concerned, so I'm not quite sure whether the government has a role in it. But it's obviously an issue which is worth debating, at least. OK, let's move, move on to this main question. I mean, did, should the government basically be distancing itself from the mainstream media for the simple reason that, you know, the mainstream media perhaps doesn't matter as much as it used to? I think that might be a bit of a mistake. Uh, I can understand politicians, government officials withdrawing from traditional media because there has been a lot of sneering at politicians over recent months and the media seems to be well known to have missed the whole leave uh, point uh, and why people wanted to vote for democracy. But I think it would be a mistake uh, to withdraw so much because it looks like then the politicians are sneering at different types of journalists, traditional they may be, uh, who are asking, you know, good questions. And people do still watch and read traditional media. I mean, it, I think its death is overrated, you know. 18 million people still watch BBC News. Uh, Facebook, yes, is the third most watched uh, a, a source of news, but I'm sure there are lots of clips from Sky News and BBC. But on you there. see, Facebook, you say Facebook is the most watched, but Facebook is getting the news from elsewhere, isn't it? I mean, it's not, it's, they're not hundreds of Facebook journalists going out chasing down the news, are they? That's right. It's, it's regurgitating uh, other people's efforts, if you like, from traditional sources and obviously Twitter and, and people's own, uh, you, you know, uh, videos from their mobile phones. I mean, John, you know, whether we can single out specific news organisations, yeah. there's no doubt it is going on. The, the candidates collectively did fewer interviews during the general election than candidates in, in, in previous elections. Is that just, just inevitable, do you think, of fragmentation of the media? I, I'm not sure I would accept that. Um, I mean, Boris Johnson himself has said that, you know, he gave whatever number it was. Yeah, but they were local interviews. They weren't sitting down with Brown Wall. But the or demand, Andrew of Neil course, or, you know, yeah. we, in mm. Margaret Thatcher's day, and you raised uh, her calling the Today programme in her day, we didn't have 24 hour news. Uh, and the number of outlets was so much smaller. So, actually, she didn't give very many interviews. When she did, you're right, it was an hour's intensive interview yeah. with somebody like Brown. No, Wall. but I also have to say, we did have, just at the end, we had 24 hour news, and she, you, was, always, right. she was always very good about She was very supportive Sky of Sky, absolutely. Um, but, no, the media has changed. And, of course, in her day, things like... No, Google and Facebook and Twitter didn't exist, so the whole social media demand was completely unknown at that time. I mean, there does seem to be an element of just not liking what the media is saying and, you know, that comment from Dominic Cummings saying the media is irrelevant. I mean, should you put yourself up if you're a Tory on the Daily Mirror or if you're uh, a Labour candidate uh, on a Conservative newspaper when you know, or indeed a uh, with a Conservative interviewer, when you know you're likely to get a pretty tough going. Well, I think that is a call for the politician. I don't think specific media programmes have any sort of God-given right to say that the Prime Minister or indeed any other politician has to appear. I think it's right that senior politicians put themselves forward for interview. But 
to some extent, it, they will choose. And if, if a programme, and I'm not necessarily accusing today or any other specific programme, but if a programme is repeatedly shown uh, to misrepresent positions or to uh, be unduly aggressive or unfair in interviews, I think a politician is entitled to turn around and say, well, I'm not going to come on again. Now, you're a documentary maker, but in daily news, certainly in, in the print media and increasingly sometimes in the broadcast media, there is a lot of opinion out there. Should you just simply boycott people who you know don't like you? No, not at all. I mean, as a documentary maker, I'm not sort of bound by the same objective rules as one would expect for news journalists. Uh, so I will shove a microphone in your face <laughs> yeah. when I want and you can uh, say no. Um, you can take my question as rude or you can answer it. That's up to you. I can't assume yeah. you'll answer, but don't assume I won't ask yeah. the question. But I think for news journalists, there has been a slide uh, away from objectivity for many, many years now. Uh, it sort of seems to have started with uh, the decline in people watching the news, so that lots of uh, newspapers and, and, and programmes started to have news you can use. Uh, consumer news became the fashion for a while. Uh, and then it's uh, feelings of journalists got in the way of, of news reporting. So there was uh, one, one journalist, he was reporting on a train crash, I think, he started talking about his own own experience. It's like, could you get out of the way? I want to know what happened and if anyone I know is affected and what is the cause of it. What about the specifics though? I mean, one senior Tory said to a colleague of mine, uh, we're not at war with Sky, but we are at war with the BBC and Channel 4 News. I mean, should, should you know, government, well, I mean, I think, government officials uh, have that attitude? Well, I think the use of a phrase at war is unfortunate. I mean, I wanted to put it like that are the very serious complaints which my party and indeed other parties have against certain broadcasters. I think Channel 4 obviously over the uh, debate and the ice block incident did cause real anger, uh, but we felt that that was extremely unfair and that they uh, were departing from their impartiality Ofcom requirements. Didn't, yeah, I don't actually agree with the Ofcom decision. I mean, it is an independent regulator, but the reasons Ofcom gave, which was that there was balance somewhere else in the schedule on another day, um, I don't think is sufficient. But that's a matter which now I'm happy to talk to Ofcom about. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.